Hello, my name is Carolyn Benny and I am an Australian Stampin' Up! demonstrator. Today I want to share with you a new and fun product that Stampin' Up! is bringing out to their range as of the 3rd of January 2018. It is called Brusho Crystal Colours and I've been playing all week with a few different techniques so I can share with you what I've learned so far. It is an amazing product and it can be used in so many different ways and to be honest it's just really good old fun. So let me share with you this product and uh, see if you like it too. So these are the five brusho colours that are in the Stampin' Up! range. They come in these cute little pots and actually it's recommended that you don't even open up the pots but when you receive them they won't come with a push pin, I've added this myself. You just poke a hole in the top of the lid and then pop in a little pin or something to keep it the powder in after you finish playing with it. So the five colours that we have with Stampin' Up! these are the Brusho colours, they're not Stampin' Up! colours but um, they're the five from their range. So we have, starting on this end, Gamboge which is an orange colour Moss green, which is a very natural green colour. Yellow, also has flecks of um, orange in it, so that's quite a nice colour too. We have brilliant red, which is indeed very brilliant. And another very bold colour, which is called Prussian blue. And I've just popped in a reasonable size hole I made with my paper piercer through the lid. I've not even opened them up. And then I've, because I've got... Um, colour coordination issues I've then just colour coordinated a little push pin in each lid. So today I want to show you three different kind of techniques with the brush -o. There's actually quite a lot of techniques I, I wouldn't be able to cover them all today but I'll show you three um, techniques. The brush -o is available as of the 3rd of January in this color, uh, catalog, the Occasions catalog. If you would like to make your purchases, if you're in Australia and you'd like to make your purchases through me or you'd like to get your hot hands on one of these catalogs, make sure you email me um, or head over to my blog carolynbenning.com and contact me. I'm more than happy to send you a catalog and of course you can always just head to my blog and purchase via my online shop there as well. Now the brush show colours come in this pack of five colours. They come in a little box and they're $52 here in Australia. So um, they're, you know, that's about just over $10 for each colour, which I think is pretty good for watercolours. They're um, little crystals, so they're not like, a, they don't come runny or anything like that. They're a little powder crystals. So they're actually a lot of fun to, to play with. But when you apply water to them, they go from being, let me show you this one here, just these little colour speckles of powder to brilliant, brilliant colours. Let me just dust off the powder. So here they are in their basic colours. We've got brilliant red, the water's been applied, gamboche, yellow, moss green and Prussian blue. And the less powder you apply, the lighter the colours. So I've been quite liberal here, so they're all quite dark. Mixing some of those colours together will give you even more um, different variations. We've got the brilliant red and the Prussian blue one part each, the yellow and the Prussian blue, the yellow and the moss green, the yellow and the gamboge, I hope I'm saying that correctly, please correct me if I am, or if I'm not, Prussian blue and moss green, and here I've actually applied two parts of brilliant red to one part of Prussian blue, and as you can see, even though they're the same colours that have been um, put together, just depending on how much crystals of each you put together will bring out different colours and different shades. I'll put those on my blog as well so you get to see those in detail. Here they are when they've been applied uh, more liberally to cardstock. You can see that if you just set down some water on the cardstock and then sprinkle the crystals on the top and don't mix them in, with a paintbrush or an aqua painter, the little crystals, 
you can see all the different colors that are in those crystals. They're not just one color, they're kind of a mix of colors, which together make some really lovely effects. Let me show you the three ways that I'm going to uh, make some cards today. I'll show you the technique and then I'll show you the finished card. Here is a little board that I've just popped down some watercolour paper, Stampin' Up! watercolour paper. And I'll show you the first technique. But before I do, I just want to cover up the other piece of cardstock. The reason being is that I do find that these little crystals, because they are so small, if they get onto um, cardstock, you don't even know that they're there until you apply the water. So I'll just cover that one up. The first thing that we're going to do is just sprinkle the little crystals on. As you can see, that's just one, you know, reasonable size um, hole that I've got there but it's it's there's quite enough coming out I don't think I'd want any more holes I know some people say put two or three holes in the top but for me just that one reasonable size one is adequate here I've got some water in a spritzer and I'm just going to apply that to the top you'll be able to see a beautiful effect really pretty and that will continue, as the crystals dissolve, it continues to change and blend and alter a little bit as well. So it's a really lovely effect. You could then go and add more colours again to get a slightly different variation. I'll pop a little bit of the Brilliant Red on as well. I tend to kind of just stick with one colour, but... It certainly does make for an interesting background effect by adding more colours and changing it up a little bit. Be careful not to add too many colours because it can get a bit muddy. Um, you don't want those colours really blending together and getting a bit too muddy. With that effect, here is the finished card. So that was just with the, just with the blue, the Prussian blue. And then I've actually used one of the new Celebration die cuts that will be available as of the 3rd of January. When you purchase $180 or more, you'll get to select this fabulous die cut set, which I'll be um, just a little sneak peek on that card today. But isn't that pretty? So that's with a little bit more red to it, but that's the finish effect on that card. Looks almost like a star scene, nighttime sky. And the second technique is if you add some water, this is actually a little bit stained with the last colouring I've done, it's got a little bit of blue in there, but if you just add some plain, be liberal with the amount of water you apply. I, I find that the crystals do work much better if you've add quite a lot of water and then apply the crystals it's kind of like a science experiment isn't it really pretty and such a different look look at the two different looks just one with crystals first and then spritzed and the second with water first and then crystals really different and that will continue to change and alter as the water dries. I tend to just pop this aside and let it dry naturally. I, I, I think that that's um, it, kind of the less impact that you make with the heat gun, um, the better for me. But you can certainly set it with a heat gun as well. And here is a finished card with that effect there. Kind of reminded me of a sea scene. So I thought I'd add our beautiful mermaid. And again, these are some um, a little sneak, sneak peek of the new dyes that are coming in celebration. Our biggest sale of the year. Really pretty. Okay, on to the final technique. 
This one is using the Remarkably You stamp set. Here I'm using the leaves from that one. This is a double stamp set and the flower from that one. I've just gone ahead already and heat embossed onto some shimmery white cardstock with clear embossing powder, the flower. Now I'm going to really liberally apply water. Again, I seem to have got a lot of blue on there. I might actually just pick that up to make sure I've got as much blue off my aqua painter as possible. Apply lots and lots of water. The first time I did this technique, I was kind of a little bit more shy with the amount of water I applied and not all of the crystals reacted, like they didn't all burst in the water. So um, I now learnt to add lots and lots of water, which is why watercolour paper or shimmery white paper is really ideal with the brush -o crystals. So if you can see... Quite a lot of water on that cardstock. Okay, now I'm going to add some yellow. So just where there's water, the crystals are reacting. And then a little bit of gamboge. Concentrating it more down at the base of the flower. So hopefully it will be a bit lighter on the end petals. And finally, brilliant red, right just at the base. Isn't that pretty? Even just like that, I think it's pretty. Now I'm going to set that to one side. Here's what it looks like when it's dried a little. So that's still just a little way off drying completely, but really pretty. Once it's dried all the way, then you can gently take a little brush to remove any extra um, little crystals. Okay. Now, second, I'm going to use moss green on these leaves. Now, the trick that I've found, moss green and I have had a, a, a rocky start to our relationship just because I, at first, I was mixing the crystals together to use moss green and I've found that I, I much prefer it. I don't find it as muddy a colour if I don't mix the crystals, if I let the crystals go onto the cardstock separately and then kind of just disperse where they are. The reason being is I think in this pot of moss green is actually two very separate colours. I think there's a lot of yellow and I think there's some purple. So when they don't, they're not mixed, they don't get muddy and you can just see once it dries little bits of purple, little flecks of yellow, and it's quite pretty. It's quite a natural effect. But if I took the aqua painter to this right now and mixed them, they would all mix in for a bit of a kind of a, a bit of a mess. Um, whereas if they're separate, here I'll show you here. See how there's little specks of purple, yellow. It's quite a pretty effect. Whereas mixed in together, it's just kind of all one khaki green, which isn't quite as interesting in my opinion. It is a very natural colour, and I think it will look lovely on some men's cards and natural kind of cards as well. So that's it wet. And then once it dries a little, this is the effect. Really interesting, really unusual effect. And here is the finished card. Oops, it does. There's the finished card. Just take that out there for you so you can see. So it's a really pretty, unusual 
can't. Something that you just couldn't do with just simple inks. Really, really very, very eye-catching. Now, how did I do this border around the outside? It's just, it's another technique with the brush -o. So I've got a piece of cardstock here that I've uh, applied, used the lots of label framelit dies with. And you can just add on top of a block, a little bit of water, like so. And then the little crystals. Don't add too many crystals because it just, you'll be surprised. These crystals are going to last you forever because there is just a tiny little amount of crystals, a little sprinkle, and look how much, look how much colour you get. The other thing to remember with this is you can just use this, um, the, the crystals as a simple uh, watercolouring ink. You know, it could just watercolour as it is, just by using this technique. I'm going to be using it as a wash, so it's a little bit more ad hoc, but definitely if you were colouring something, you know, a flower, you could just use it as a paintbrush and watercolour by mixing it on a little block like that. Okay. Now, set that aside and let it dry all the way. I have just used plain Whisper White cardstock, so it's not, it doesn't love too much water being applied to it. But here's one I did just a little while ago, and as you can see, that's lightening up and it's looking almost a bit like a sky. And here it is, completely finished. So there you go. Three different, very different cards. Take this paper away so you can, they don't get wet. Three very different cards using the brush -o crystals. What do you think? Do you think you're interested in trying the brush -o crystals? I hope you do. You can also use um, starch that you use for ironing your clothes. That gives another effect as well. So lots of different techniques for using brush -o.